Hello guys, uh, welcome to the PCAM lab. Today, I will show you how to use the carboy system to determine the heat capacity ratio for three different gases. The three different gases we are going to determine today are argon, nitrogen, and carbon dioxide. Before the experiment, I want to introduce the experimental setup of carboy system to you first. The white gas bottle here is a carboy that we will use to fill the gas inside and at the bottom of the carboy it has a valve which is used for venting the gas and for some reason the valve was flipped upside down at the top of the carboy as a rubber cap and you can see that there are three gas rubber tubings are connected to the rubber cap. The first uh, tubing is connected to a gas pressure sensor and the sensor is connected to computer so that the computer can monitor, can read the pressure as time. In the graph here, the real-time pressure is recorded as a function of time. The second tubing is connected to our uh, desired gas in the first case of our experiment is gonna be argon gas. The third gas tubing is connected to a vacuum. Before the experiment, the carboy is filled with air and other gas impurities. By putting vacuum on carboy, we can remove these uh, gas impurities. Later, we can refill the carboy with our desired gas, such as argon. Now we have successfully finished the introduction of the experiment. We are moving to the next step of the, the real experiment. We will do some preparation work before uh, actually determining the CPCV ratio for the argon. One step needs to be uh, finished is to purge the system with argon. To purge the system with argon, first we have to use a vacuum to vacuum the air out of the carboy. So uh, to remo remove all the air and the uh, gas impurities. So we must uh, make sure that the valve for the venting the gas in the carboy is closed. And uh, now I'm going to turn on the valve for the vacuum. In the screen of the computer, you can see the pressure starts decreasing. And uh, for the safety reasons, I will probably uh, turn off the valve for the vacuum until the pressure uh, reaches 80 kilopascal or 85 kilopascal. Okay, that's good enough. Let's turn off the vacuum. Let's turn off the vacuum and now we're going to turn on the argon to charge the carboy system with argon. And then in the screen, you can see the pressure is going up. The next step is turn to open the valve for the exhaust and then we fill the argon and then we purge the system with argon for uh, five minutes and after the purging for the five minutes we will repeat the vacuum and the purging processes for three times so in that case we will have uh, we will have the carboy system fully charged with the fully filled or fully charged with the argon and then we will be good to do our first experiment a few moments later. Uh, after three times of vacuum and purging, now we have successfully filled the carboy container, the gas bottle with the argon gas. Now we should be good to start our experiments. So for each gas uh, in the carboy system, we have to do uh, seven measurements and also for 
for each measurement, we have to record three different pressure values. To start the experiment, we have to make sure the wall for the gas exhaust is closed, and also the wall for the vacuum is closed. And we will pressurize the system with argon gas. Uh, at the computer over here, we already got a, a baseline of pressure that is our atmospheric pressure. And now I will simply open the valve for the argon and charge the carboy with argon gas. And at the same time, I will hold the rubber so the rubber doesn't pop off. And I will charge the carboy system to 115 kilopascal. And then I will close the valve. Then I will simply remove the rubber cap very quickly and then quickly put it back on. So the pressure during the whole process was recorded as a function of time. And then from the chart or from the graph, we can get our three different pressure values. That's going to be our pressure one, pressure two, and pressure three. So I will hold the rubber cap until the pressure reaches the plateau. So that's going to be our pressure three. OK, in the computer now, as I hold in the, the rubber cap, we see that the pressure three is reaching a plateau. So we should be good for our first measurement. And then we will repeat the whole measurement for seven times. At this point, we have finished our first measurement of argon gas. Then, to calculate the heat capacity ratio, we have to write down three different pressure values. So, I will show you how to find the three different points uh, from this graph. So, the pressure one is the maximum pressure we have charged to the carboy system, which is the, um, this point over here, the maximum pressure. P1, pressure 1. And the pressure 2 is the lowest pressure that after we release the pressure in the carboy. So you can see the, the deep over here, that's going to be our pressure 2. And the pressure 3 is the pressure uh, at this plateau. So uh, that is the pressure that we put back the rubber cap. So the pressure went up and then reaches a plateau. Okay, uh, we have already finished our first measurement for argon. Now I'm going to do a second measurement for argon. So the valve for the gas exhaust is closed. The valve for the vacuum is also closed. And I will hold the pressure, the rubber cap with my left hand. And I will simply open the argon gas again. And this time I'm trying to reach 120 kilopascal for the P1. Okay, at this moment, I will release the rubber cap very quickly and then put it back on as soon as possible. And then I will hold the rubber cap and so the pressure can reach the pressure three, which is the plateau. You see the pressure pressure is going up and then we will reach a plateau. For the second measurement, we can also do the same thing for the three different pressure values. So this is the P1, the maximum pressure for the second measurement, which is this pointy end over here. And also the pressure 2 for the second measurement is the deep pre the pressure, the deep over here. 
and the pressure three for the second measurement is the pressure at this plateau over here. For each different gas, we have to repeat seven different measurements. Now we have successfully finished two measurements. So uh, we will, I will repeat the, the next five measurements for the argon gas. So I'm not gonna show the video again. Because it is kind of the same thing to show the, the procedure and it is kind of boring to show the video again, but for sure, I will repeat the next five rounds and then there's gonna be seven measurements for the argon gas. After finishing the first gas, we will disconnect the argon and then reconnect the gas, argon gas, to the to the to the nitrogen. So the nitrogen gas is over here. And uh, we will repeat the vacuum and purging process for three times and in total it's gonna be 15 to 20 minutes so that we can fill the carboy with nitrogen instead of argon. And uh, we will do the seven measurements again for the nitrogen. And after the nitrogen measurements, we will disconnect the gas line with nitrogen and reconnect the gas line to the Argon, uh, to the carbon dioxide. So, in that case, we will do seven different measurements for carbon dioxide, and uh, we will get the uh, the heat capacity ratios for nitrogen and carbon dioxide uh, by doing this. In the end, I will uh, copy all the data into CSV file, and uh, you guys can. Uh, uh, export the file into Excel and replot the data, replot the the pressure as a function of time, and then you should be able to find the pressure values from the plots, and uh, you can also do the same thing for the nitrogen and uh, carbon dioxide. So you will be able to find the heat capacity ratios for three different gases. You can take average for three for the seven measurements for three different gases uh, and you can calculate standard deviation and errors. Uh, that's going to be all for today's lab. I hope you enjoyed a lot and learned a lot from this experiment. Thank you.